Hi everybody, this is Sir Pierre, back another day with another review. And today I'm gonna to talk about vacuum cleaners actually. And for you guys that are, guys and women that are new to my channel, I used to start with talking about my needs and why I bought this item. So I wanna start with this uh, standard, old school uh, vacuum cleaner, Neil Fisk, has served me very well. I have had that one for I could have guessed like 10 years and it's really good no problems at all but there are two things that I don't like with it uh, it's not loud but it has a frequency that really pierces my brain uh, so even if I have a cleaning lady here and she's in another room with the door closed and I have noise cancelling headphones on me I can still hear that frequency so that's one of the pro problems I can't use it myself at all. And then since it's quite old and quite rare, the brand, even though it's a Swedish brand, uh, the bags are is they are not easy to, uh, to 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 come by. And when do you notice that you need new vacuum cleaning bags? Of course, when they are full. So two years ago, maybe one year ago, I decided to get. The, one of the newer models and best models out there back then was Dyson and I think Bosch actually and I did the full um, yeah I read on about them as I usually do learned everything about them and none of them were good actually the Dyson had really poor battery life the Bosch had an easy exchangeable battery none of them could stand up by themselves that was one thing that was important for me to me and uh, they were just not worth the money and i think here in sweden the dyson goes for like 80 euro that's almost a thousand dollars so i ended up buying this one i think it is uh electrolux pure something and there are a few things that I like with it and a few things that I really don't like with it. So it's good looking enough to be standing uh, out. I don't need to hide it in a closet. Easy to use, maybe a bit heavy, uh, not loud. And I really like uh, the lighting. So a vacuum cleaner today with lamps is a must for me. I really do like it. Uh, it's actually easy to vacuum clean with the uh, lights turned off in the ceiling and only use that light because you can really see every spot that you missed. So that's really nice. But, and the battery, battery life is good and yeah, it's good, but um, it doesn't suck as much as I would like to. It most, more or less only uses the uses the the brush it to uh, to force the the things up so if i have like cookie crumbles it can't take that the old vacuum clean takes everything so that's one thing and then we have the mode where you can i'm going to show you my my older uh, vacuum clean i don't have it anymore i gave it to my mom i can send send you a, a post a picture of it uh, that was the old one with the small table vacuum cleaner that you put in a shaft so you can use it as a big vacuum cleaner. And this has that function as well. But it's really bad. So this is the small version of the vacuum cleaner. This is as small as it gets. So if you want to vacuum like my kitchen uh, seats or something, this is the way. So I ended up buying yet another vacuum cleaner. This one, also Neil Fisk, quite expensive. I think like 450 euro, maybe 400 euro. But this, this is really good. I really like this one. Um, so yeah, either way, I'm not satisfied with this one. I want to replace this one uh so now i did the old fashioned thing that i do i check the latest product and the most expensive products 
and the latest vacuum cleaner here in Sweden is the most expensive one. This is this one. So Miele Triflex HX1 Pro. And I'm not gonna bore you with the unboxing thing, but I'm gonna unbox it and show you what it looks like. I haven't done too much research about it. I just know that it has good battery life, like uh, up to two hours battery life. And that is three in one as they call it. So it is the small vacuum cleaner and then you can put a tube on it so you can vacuum in the ceiling. And then we have the big one. Most important for me was that it was able to stand up by itself. Uh, Dyson and Bosch, even today, they don't stand up by themselves. Uh, so you have to hang them by the wall when you don't use it. So I'm going to unbox this and uh, I'm just as curious as you are about it. And then the end of this video is going to be my review in a couple of days uh, about what I think about it. So I hope you will continue watching. All right, uh, it looks good, looks uh, yeah masculine, but there are already some things that I don't like. Uh, in this mode, which I can understand, it can't stand up. Uh, but then you have to rebuild it and have the engine uh, down at the bottom. And uh, if you don't have that, then you have used your hand vacuum cleaner. Quite large. Uh, quite larger than I expected. So um, these transformations I can easily do with with this one. Uh, the Miele has one length. Uh, this one I can adjust just the way I like it, very easy. And uh, if I want to vacuum clean under my bed, I just do like this. So this one is, is actually easier to use so far um, and of course this can stand up either way so uh, this isn't bad uh, and why we have the 120 minutes power is because we, we got two batteries with the, with the Miele one and then we have this wall mount that I'm not gonna use I think and your basic uh, battery charger and the battery wasn't charged at all. So, so far, this is quite heavy. Um, of course, I'm going to charge it and try it, of course. But it is a bit too long like this. And the upper part is heavy and it can't stand by itself. So, uh, yeah. And as I said, this is the most expensive vacuum cleaner you can buy today. The price here in Sweden is uh, 1,000 euro. So maybe a bit less in US. Uh, I don't know how your Miele prices are in US, but uh, 10,000 kroners, 1,000 euro, maybe a bit more, more or less. And that's quite a lot of money. And uh, just having it in my hand like this, uh, dead, it doesn't feel great. It doesn't. This, this version is heavy. So I'm gonna change it and put the engine down and then of course uh, charge the batteries but so far this is much easier to transform if you want to vacuum clean under the bed and, and so far yeah uh, this is the mode that you're usually going to have it in i guess with the engine at the bottom not top heavy much easier to use like this and then it can stand by itself but still uh, i wish the handle were retractable like uh, this one you see it's a huge difference um, this is quite a lot longer and bigger so i don't want to have this one standing uh, out in my small apartment this one is easy to use to hide in a corner or something but uh, of course the most important thing is how does it vacuum uh, as I said, this one doesn't take like chocolate crumbles and uh, cookie crumbles. So um, I hope this one does. Because for the money, I don't remember what, what this one cost. It wasn't cheap, 
but it was cheaper than the Dyson and Bosch. Uh, but uh, it, it has to be like, this one has to be three times better than this one to cost a thousand euro today, almost two years later. So yeah, I'm curious. I have tried the Miele vacuum cleaner now for a couple of days now, and I really don't like it at all. There is one thing that I like it, like with it, and that is that there are uh, two batteries and two different chargers. Uh, so you can charge them both at the, at the same time. But that's it. So now I'm gonna show you everything that I don't like about it. So my old Electrolux has the charging station at the floor, and it can also stand by itself. This can also stand by itself, but if you're gonna charge it, you need to take out the batteries and charge it, or use the wall mount. But if I'm gonna use the wall mount, then I have to have the engine rebuilt at the top. And if I have that, then, then it can stand by itself. So if I'm gonna have this by the wall, hanging like this, it's gonna look, look super stupid. Um, so that's one thing. If I'm gonna charge it, I have to either way, uh, either uh, rebuild it and have this on top and still it would take a lot of place or a lot of space uh, or take off the battery and charge it but that's okay since we have two chargers uh, and now I'm going to show you yeah I'm going to show you everything that I don't like about it so with a normal vacuum cleaner if I want to vacuum under the bed I just put it out right away and do like that that's it and, uh, Electrolux vacuum cleaner with this one is more or less the same adjust the handle and then if I want to go under the bed I just move that upwards and then back down again with this one I really don't like that sound if I want to go under the bed with it I have to do like this And everything sits really hard. Now I can go under the bed. And still it's not good for it. And when I have it like this, as I said earlier, then it can't stand by itself. So I have to do this operation every time I want to go under the whatever, bed or anything. And the rebuilding process is really too difficult. And me with a tired back, it's no good at all. And I just realized that I did it wrong again. So now you see how stupid this is. I did it the wrong way. And this operation rebuilding thing, you don't want to do that more than once. I can tell you that. I don't know even if this is the right way. Yeah, and now my back is tired. So that's it. A normal vacuum cleaner goes whatever you want. Easy like that, easy to, to drive around. And the Electrolux is also kind of easy. You move, you turns, whatever I like. So the wheels on that one is really good. But the Miele, no matter how much I turn it, it doesn't go the way I want. And I really don't like that sound. And talking about the sound, that's why I do this without the microphone so you can hear it. 
uh, the engine noise is, is okay. This is maximum. But the wheels burning is bad. But the engine noise is okay. And I don't remember how this one sounds. But when I use rolling tool on the floor, it's much easier to turn, much easier to roll around with. And the sound is... Yeah, it's a bit louder, it is. At first, I thought that the Miele had better suction uh, than my older ones. But now, after a couple of days, I don't think so. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna crumble a cookie, uh, one for every vacuum cleaner, and see how well it does. See, the problem with the Electrolux one is that it doesn't take the bigger bites or bigger pieces. So when I turn off the vacuum cleaner, it drops the pieces again. But it was actually better than I expected. And as you see, we have the same problem here. With the bigger pieces, I have to go over it several times so it crushes the pieces and it doesn't take it all. But still, uh, it's cleaner than I thought. I thought that this one didn't take like dust and finer things, but it does actually. So I can't complain about that part. I guess we are at the final part. So let's say if I wanna Every time after I eat, I vacuum clean the, the kitchen table. This is not the kitchen table, but it will do. So to just stand a vacuum cleaner, you do like this. And you have the accessories in the vacuum cleaner. And that's the only thing that I don't like with this one, is that the, the handheld part is this whole thing. So this is how you vacuum clean. The table that's why I bought this one and this one is actually this is excellent Neil Fisk that one is great and then we have this one again with the biggest downside uh, I am uh, happy with the sound I just like I just don't like the rolling sound but the biggest downside of this one is this rebuilding part. That me and my bad back really doesn't like. So I'm going to do this when I want to vacuum my table or am I just going to go and pick up this one? Of course I'm just going to go and pick up this one because you really don't want to rebuild this every time. So that's the bigger draw, biggest draw with it. Uh, so is it worth the money? Absolutely not. Uh, it's big, it's better than the Dyson. And the Dyson is, you see, I did it wrong again. The Dyson is the second most expensive one. And the Dyson, what I've seen from video, uh, it doesn't take big crumbles, uh, it's, it's a lot louder and it can't stand by itself. Uh, so this is better than the Dyson, 
but for a thousand euro and this one was i don't remember but let's say 600 euro half the price this is not twice as good as, the, as that one absolutely not so uh Mimit Reflex HX1, I think it's called, is absolutely not worth a thousand euro. Um, half the price, I don't know, I think I still would choose this one. Uh, if I wouldn't already have this one, then maybe I wouldn't have disliked this one as much. But since I already have this one and I already have this one, that makes me really dislike the, the Milan. So, absolutely not worth the money. That's it. If you have any questions, you should ask me. I've seen the other videos, they're like half an hour long. And I haven't gone into details with this one. It's just that I want to show you my needs for a vacuum cleaner and what I don't like or like with the Mila one. So, thanks for watching. Ask me if you have any questions. Thumbs up, subscribe, comment. Good night.